Check this out. 1963 Volkswagen Beetle. And as you watch this, remember earlier that 1952 rolled across the block and sold for $50,000. I don't think we'll see quite the same money, but this one looks pretty nice. But we're seeing a lot of evolution here. Bumper with the bumper guards. Still the glass-covered headlights here. The uh, turn signals have migrated to the top of the fenders. No more Wolfsburg crest, just the VW emblem. Single piece, flat glass windshield. And a lot of toys have been added, like the roof rack and the luggage here. But it's inside this one here. It does not have the Wolfsburg AM radio, rather a radio daily plate. So yeah, you paid money for the radio. If you didn't, that's what you got the plate. Now, they've added an interesting rack to the back of the car uh, of a type I have not seen, where you could strap another suitcase onto that rack. The problem is the engine lid then will only open up about six inches making things difficult to service, so uh, bring your crescent wrench to be able to, <laughs> to get that rack off if you need to get underneath into the engine there. You know, for inexpensive mass-produced cars, these were and are known to be very high quality to build. In fact, they're water, they're water tight. That's why you can have to be sure when these things float for, I think, an hour or two. In fact, Woody Allen made a point of that in his movie Sleeper, when he had kind of a coach wagon. It was still floating after 100 years of uh, submerging. Now look to the right of the round speedometer and see something that we have talked about earlier that was added. That is the gas gauge. You get a speedo, you get a gas gauge. You don't get a tachometer, but there are little marks on the speedometer indicating the maximum permissible speed in each gear. And you got a whopping 34 horsepower out of this. I mean, that earlier car that we saw went across the block would normally have had about an 1130 engine in it. This has like, I think, 1190. They refer to it as a 1200, although it's just a tad under that in terms of its total displacement. Once again, only, and you can't quite get that open, can you? Well, I can get it to here, uh, but otherwise the rack's in the way. You don't need your crescent wrench. They thoughtfully provided wing nuts here uh, to make the ease access to that engine bed. I see them. And this is called selling the sizzle, wherein these accessories bring the car to 11 to 10, so if you will. This may be a reproduction, but it's very fresh. I wouldn't be surprised if it is. Otherwise, it's a little bit of a great piece of powerboard clear. So I'm going to need some bills. Luggage up top. But to think about it, this body style actually goes back to the early 1930s. And it really held very well. I mean, it went into full screen production after World War II. And of course, the great story is that Ford was offered the opportunity to have the Volkswagen production line. They were offered it at no money if they just took it over. And they went, nah, this thing looks like a big loser. We're not going to do it. Again, another one of the great mistakes made in the business world. $17,000. $500 for a 1963 Volkswagen Beetle. We're going to see another pickup truck.